Rodney, there are many important events in a young man's life. First communion, first school dance, first call girl purchased by a kindly bachelor uncle. Today, you are gonna experience one of those milestones. You mean? Yes, son, your first freak show. Oh, boy! Can I yell mean stuff at him just because you're different? Sure, audience participation's part of the show. All right. Uh, they grow up so fast. I know. Can you believe Zoe and I have an interview at the little Wean's preschool this week? Oh, yeah, I remember those. Here's a tip. Freeze some whiskey and give her a cube to suck on. She won't cause any trouble. Well, I do hope Zoe makes a good impression. It's such a sweet little school. Who couldn't fall in love with this little cutie? <sighs> Mr. McPherson? Shelby has to go bathroom. Do you mind? He needs someone to pull down his pants, lift him up, and hold it. H hold it? He won't let go of his bat. Mother Nature betrayed a cruel streak when she created this monstrosity. Those with heart conditions are advised to look away from the five-fingered man. I think I'm going to barf. And for only a small fee, you can take home one of these specially designed gloves, the five-fingered man. Everything you thought it would be, son. And more. Your eyes do not deceive you. Captured in the primitive heart of the Burmese jungle, Banzai the miniature man has no more brains than a chimpanzee or monkey. Some may consider this cage cruel. Rest assured it is there for your protection. <gasps> and now you can own one of the actual spears Banzai used to kill wild animals before savagely tearing the meat from their bones with his tiny, tiny teeth. Right, hey, well. Dad, if Banzai got out of his cage, do you think he'd kill somebody? He might. Cool. Bring that boy to my trailer. Before we discuss business, may I offer you a cognac? No, thanks. Are you sure? It's a 70-year-old guest on Lagrange. Look, Bonsai, let's cut to the chase. How much do you want for the junk my son broke? It's difficult to say. Each of these peers was an heirloom engraved with the mark of my ancestors. Putting a price on such treasures is hopelessly vulgar. However... 200 bucks? For a bunch of plastic spears? That sum also reflects the emotional distress I've suffered this evening. Of course, if you'd rather entrust matters to a jury... <laughs> You are gonna pay me back every cent of this. How am I gonna make two hundred dollars? You are gonna go out and work for it. I'll take that drink. Eeny, deeny, pepsodini, ah, ba, bubalini. Did you know I come from carnival people? Really? Yeah. My earliest memory is being squeezed into a tiny box under the roulette wheel and working the magnet to make sure nobody won. Mm. With a garden hose to breathe through, I could stay in there all day long. Sometimes I'd climb into the dryer with a bag of peanuts and reminisce. Here's our car. Oh, nuts. They're too small for us all to ride together. Yep, too bad. Real shame. See you at the end. Bye-bye. There is no way this is going to be scarier than that. So what do you think Zoe should wear to her interview? Boy, you're really obsessed with getting into this school. It's just so perfect for her. And it's so important to expose Zoe to the right things. What about the jumper with the koala bears dancing around a maple? Wanda, nobody's going to judge Zoe by what she wears. It's what a person has inside that counts. I guess you're right. Hey, look. The black light is making your shoelaces glow. Your teeth, too. And Zoe's hat. <laughs> <laughs> It's Cradle Cap, Mrs. McPherson. An unattractive but harmless childhood malady characterized by heavy crusted yellow lesions on the scalp. <sighs> Dr. Gruber, we're interviewing at a preschool tomorrow. Is there any chance it'll clear up by then? There's no way of knowing, but I can recommend something to control these flakes. A salve? No, a snowblower! <laughs> we got six inches of powder on Mount Zoe. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Wanda, this interview is just to get on a waiting list. She wouldn't go to Little Weans until she's three. The only way they're going to let her in is if they need a bell ringer. They're not going to care how she looks. You said this is a nice school. Yes, Daryl, it's a nice school. And Richard Gere is a nice man. He thinks spiritual thoughts. He communes with the Dalai Lama. And he married Cindy Crawford. Didn't last. A periscope, Captain. 
Uh, Kenny? Boss has got a new wife! They just keep getting younger. Keep your voice down. He can't hear anymore. I think it's disgusting the way old man Thompson keeps trading in for a younger wife. Why? You don't stop loving someone just because they get a wrinkle. I believe that the people you truly care for will always be beautiful in your eyes. That's lovely. Why, thank you, Kenny. No, she just bent over to tie her shoe. So how come you're selling it? Yeah, I got some creditors barking up my rear. Otherwise, I wouldn't even think about parking with the best vehicle on the road. It looks kind of cheap. Are you sure it's not a knockoff? Positive. The Schwinn name is synonymous with quality. Forget it. Hey, Stuffy, come back! I I'll throw in a GI Mo doll! I think it's spreading. But think positive. Maybe it'll cover a whole body and no one will notice. Zoe, let's go to the school that accepted you. Don't forget to tip your teachers. They really appreciate it. Is that Wanda McPherson? Hi, Bunny. We're just dashing over to Haggett's tailor. He's being fitted for a little top hat and tails. Oh my gosh. Haggett's hair certainly is getting long. Isn't it beautiful? His father wanted to cut it, but I said, you're not touching one hair on his precious golden head. Oopsie, someone's neckerchief is askew. Skewsy. How can anyone name their son Haggett? Haggett the maggot is the best he can hope for. <laughs> Wanda, we must play date as soon as your nanny has a day off. Here's my number. Call me. I just might do that. Joe! Bye! Your son looks like a girl! Please don't have cradle cap. Please don't have cradle cap. Please don't have cradle cap. Oh, it's still there. <gasps> oh, Zoe! It's pink eye, Mrs. McPherson. A harmless conjunctivitis characterized by tissue swelling and pustular discharge. Is there anything I can do? Yes. Put a warm compress over both eyes. But she only has it in one. Not her eyes. Yours! She must be one ugly baby by now. Am I right? <laughs> oh, I may as well cancel the interview. Wanna, I still think you're worried about nothing. Do you remember what I said yesterday about appearances not mattering? Yes. Well, it's just as true today. Kenny, how goes the fight? Just fine, sir. Good morning, Mr. Thompson. Hey, guy. How can he not know my name? I've been here for seven years. Let's put it this way, Captain. What do you do all day? Work. What do I do all day? Watch me work. And yet I'm moving up the ladder faster. Why? Because I look good. Well, I don't care, Kenny. I say in the long run, a man rises or falls not because of how he looks, but because of what he is. I gotta respect that. Yeah, I should hope so. No, they're making out in public. Yo. Oh, poor little Zoe Modo. Well, don't worry, Mrs. Mac. Most ugly girls compensate by developing real good personalities. Fizzy. I know this one barker named Sue Ellen who's so funny, she almost got a date. It's not permanent. What do you think? You got a hockey mask? I had a bonnet around here somewhere. Is that it over there? I wanted to have to... Uh, weather. I was so excited about this interview, and now I'm just dreading it. She doesn't look so bad. Really? Sure. The dress matches her eye, and the socks match her pus. What about the scab? Oh, uh, you hardly notice that. Hey, look at Hitler. Brittany, that's rude. You should say Charlie Chaplin. Who's that? Funny little guy with the Hitler mustache. Oh. Rodney! What? Is somebody paying you to talk to Mrs. McPherson? No. And shouldn't you be out earning money? I already tried. When did you try? When you weren't around. Well, try again. You tried. I don't owe me $200. Are you still hung up on it? It was two days ago. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mrs. McPherson. And this is your daughter, Zoe. Zoe is a lovely child, Mrs. McPherson.
and so feminine. I've always thought so. Hi, honey. Daryl, you're not supposed to be here. My meeting was canceled, so I thought I'd take my two favorite ladies to lunch. You must be Zoe's father. That's me. Guess you can tell by the red hair. Red hair? Why, you dear colorblind thing. When will you remember our Zoe has blonde hair? Haggit? And Haggit to you, sweetie. Haggit is a Scottish word meaning peace be with you. Haggit. I like that. You know, I'm not supposed to say this, but I feel certain little wee will have a place for Zoe McPherson. How could you do that? In two years, when Zoe starts school, no one's going to remember how she looked. But replacing our daughter with another child because of a few little imperfections? Little imperfections? If you squint, you'd swear she just invaded Poland. Well, I am very disappointed in you, Wanda. Oh, spare me. Especially in light of what I said this morning yeah, about appearances yeah, not, not mattering. mattering. You know, it's all very well to ride in on your high horse and say it's what's inside that counts. But when what's inside is leaking out your eyeball, believe me, that's that counts, too. Appearances do matter, Daryl, and until you realize that, you're never gonna get anywhere in this world. Excuse me. Don't you work for me? Yes, Mr. Thompson. Daryl McPherson. Why, who's this? My wife. How could you do that? I just took your advice, and it worked. I got noticed. But saying busy was your wife? Explains how my daughter got her blonde hair. Fine. You made your point. Fine. Hello? Oh, yes. Zoe and I would love to attend. Hag it to you, too. Oh, new parents tea at the school tomorrow. Now I have to ask Bunny for another play date. Oh, what a tangled web we weave. Hello? Oh, yes, sir. We'll be there. What was that? Old man Thompson's hosting a party for up-and-coming employees. Who are you calling? My wife. Rodney, you are not getting out of this! Dad, I'm no good at making money. Let's just call this what it is, a failed experiment. When I was your age, I was all over the neighborhood, mowing lawns, shoveling snow. People heard a knock on the door, they said, there's that Bitterman kid again. Were they annoyed? No, they weren't annoyed. They were happy. Well, how can I shovel snow if there's no snow? Don't you be stupid on purpose. What does stupid mean? I know what you're doing. You're trying to make me so sick of this that I give up. Huh? I can be stubborn longer than you can be stupid. You lost me. Too many big words. Oh, that's it! Melinda, could you watch Zoe for a while? Busy's not available. She got homework? No, Daryl's taking her to a party. Oh. It's not what you think. Hey, none of my business if you want to swing. I don't have time to explain right now. I have to run over to Bunny's. I thought you didn't like Bunny. It's not what you think. You should say that a lot. Melinda, I'm just going to borrow her son so I can pretend he's my daughter at a preschool tea party. Uh-huh. And I'm going to knit a space suit and fly to the moon. Have fun with your new best friend. Oh. I'm sorry to drag you into this, Busy. Don't be sorry. I'm getting seven bucks an hour and a boat ride. Well, it goes against my grain, pretending to be something I'm not. So this whole afternoon is going to be really painful for me. So there's some soy formula that you can mix with boiled water, only don't use a tea kettle because the whistle might damage his little ears. Okay. Ooh, and for the same reason, could you avoid those hard consonant sounds? You know, kaga taza. Okay. Er, uh, mm-hmm. Bye-bye. I know my precious Haggit's in good hands. The best. Let's go put on your dress. <laughs> and it's a Scottish word meaning peace be with you. I think I've heard that. Look at that hair. Someday this baby is going to have a lot of boyfriends. <laughs> I wouldn't be a bit surprised. Excuse me. Excuse me. In a few years, we will have the privilege of educating your children. However, their most important teachers will always be you.
I would now ask each parent to look into their child's eyes and make a silent promise that you will teach them to embrace honesty, eschew the superficial, and above all, be true to themselves. Haggett! Haggett! Could you watch Zoe for a minute? I have to call my husband. I'm so sorry he couldn't make it today. So was he. Up. I've got this boilerplate prenup the Supreme Court couldn't overturn. Excuse me, Mr. McPherson? Phone call from your wife. Wife? Just my mistress having her little joke. <laughs> Pure Daryl. <laughs> hey, baby. Oh, Daryl, I feel awful. Pretending to be something you're not is selling out your very soul. Oh, I don't know about that. What kind of example are we setting for Zoe? This is wrong. Perhaps, though it would be equally wrong to make black and white judgments about complex real life issues. Look, we'll sort it all out when we get home. Bye. Um, Mrs. McPherson, Zoe needed a new diaper. Are you aware she has a penis? Work! No! Work! No! Ugh. Texas Ranger who doesn't carry a gun. You talk mighty big, Walker. Ouch! Hey! <sighs> We're a couple of misfits, see? You because of your hideous appearance. Me because I reject my father's rock-headed belief that a man should pay off his debts. There's gotta be a way to make a fast buck without contributing anything to society. There's just gotta. Huh? Thank you. Enjoy the freak. It's okay, Shelby. She's on the list. Your eyes do not deceive you. Zoe has no more brains than a chimpanzee or monkey. I assure you, this yarn is here for your protection. Oh. Rodney, how could you? I was gonna cut you in on the net profits. Rodney! Okay, okay, adjusted gross, but that's it. What would your father say if he knew what you were doing? Got another busload, son. Oh, sweetheart, your father was right. It's what a person has inside that counts. From now on, we are who we are. And if that means some doors are closed to us, then those are rooms we don't need to be in.